Chapter 11 of The Mandalorian, the heiress name-dropped a certain Jedi named Ahsoka Tano. It sounds like we might be seeing her pop up in the series soon, so for all the Star Wars fans who might be getting into Star Wars television for the very first time with The Mandalorian, here is everything we know about Ahsoka from her appearances in the two animated series, The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels, as well as the book Ahsoka. Who she is, why she's important, and how she's relevant to the story being told. If this is something you think you'd be interested in, watch The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels on Disney Plus and read the book. You'll get her full story so far, and frankly, it's going to be better than me just telling you what happens. But if you only want the basics, here you go. Ahsoka Tano was a Togruton, discovered by Jedi Master Plo Koon at a very young age. Recognized as being gifted in the Force, she was taken back to the Jedi Temple on Coruscant to be trained as a Jedi. When she was 14 years old, she traveled to Christophsis, where she met Obi-Wan Kenobi, the clone Rex, and became the Padawan learner of Anakin Skywalker. While Anakin was initially hesitant to take on an apprentice, the two of them bonded during the battle where they destroyed an enemy shield generator, securing a Republic victory over the Confederacy of Independent Systems. Any celebration would have to wait, though, because they were both immediately reassigned to travel to Teth, where Jabba the Hutt's kidnapped son was being held. They rescued the Hutlet and returned him to his father on Tatooine, which gained the Jedi and the Republic the cooperation of the Hutt cartel in the ongoing conflict. When General Grievous began attacking the Republic with a warship called the Malevolence, Ahsoka witnessed how headstrong her master could be. Anakin wished to destroy the bridge of the ship at the cost of the clones under his command, but Ahsoka convinced him to instead attack the ship's weapons and hyperdrive, crippling the ship while preserving the lives of many clones. Anakin's droid R2-D2 was captured by Grievous not long after he escaped the Malevolence's ultimate destruction. Ahsoka helped Anakin infiltrate the Separatist listening post where R2 was being held to rescue the Astromech and his vital Republic intelligence. She was then passed into the brief service of Jedi Master Luminara Unduli, who had been tasked with delivering a captured Separatist leader to the Republic capital. Unfortunately, they were betrayed by one of their own guards who allowed Sith assassin Asajj Ventress to retake their captive. On a mission with Jedi Master Ayla Secura, Ahsoka and Anakin found themselves stranded on the planet Meridune after retreating from a fight. There they encountered a village of Lermans who were hesitant to offer the Jedi any assistance. They felt that the Jedi were just as responsible for the Clone Wars as the Separatists were and feared retribution. The Separatists did chase the Jedi to the planet, but the Lerman people ultimately decided to stand and fight back against the invaders. Over on the planet Naboo, a secret Separatist plot was uncovered to unleash a supposedly extinct virus across the galaxy known as the Blue Shadow Virus. Ahsoka was infected alongside Senator Padme Amidala, who also happened to be Anakin's secret wife. Anakin raced off and found a cure before Padme, Ahsoka, and many clones succumbed to the disease and they were able to contain the virus. As Ahsoka grew as a Padawan, Anakin trusted her with more responsibilities. At the Battle of Ryloth, she was given command of her first squadron. She led her troopers into a trap and did not retreat when her master ordered her to. The loss of her pilots devastated her and she had to learn to get over her failure to lead another squadron in a second, and this time successful, attack. Unfortunately, she didn't quite learn her lesson completely. On Felucia, Ahsoka again ignored orders to retreat, wishing to prove herself a capable warrior. As punishment, she was sent to work in the Jedi Archives away from the front lines of the fighting. Ironically, she wound up engaged in a plot by the bounty hunter Cad Bane to rob the Archives of a Jedi holocron. She joined Anakin once more in a mission to catch him, but he was able to capture her instead, blackmailing Anakin into opening the stolen holocron, revealing a list of Force-sensitive children across the galaxy. Three younglings were kidnapped and taken to Mustafar at the request of the Sith Lord Darth Sidious, but Anakin and Ahsoka rescued them all. Heading back to Felucia, Ahsoka and her master came across a village being harassed by a pirate gang. They teamed up with a group of bounty hunters to teach the villagers how to defend themselves, and together they drove the pirates away. The pair then traveled to Geonosis, where the Clone Wars began, to destroy the droid factories. Alongside Luminara Unduli and her Padawan Barisafi, they were successful. The two Padawans were sent to Dantooine with medical supplies, but several Geonosian brainworms infected the clone troopers, crew of the ship, and even Barris. Ahsoka found a way to kill the worms and save her friend's life before reaching their destination. Back home on Coruscant, Ahsoka lost her lightsaber while tracking criminals in the underworld of the planet. She received instruction from the elderly master Terra Sinube, who calmly helped her recover the stolen lightsaber from the thieves. 
When Boba Fett appeared to exact revenge on Mace Windu for the death of his father, Ahsoka and Plo Koon joined forces to find young Fett's mentor, the bounty hunter Ara Singh. They uncovered a lead which led them to Florum. There, Fett was captured and Singh was assumed dead after Ahsoka caused her ship to crash. She later traveled to the planet Mandalore, home of the Mandalorian people and a planet that was neutral in the Clone Wars. Her goal was to help educate young Mandalorians on law and public service, but she was also undercover, hoping to root out corruption. Her students actually discovered a conspiracy to unseat the Duchess of Mandalore, and Ahsoka put a stop to it and arrested the plot's leader, Prime Minister Almec. She returned back to Coruscant to rest, but began having dreams that her friend, Padme Amidala, was in danger of assassination by none other than Aura Singh. Her dreams wound up coming true, but Ahsoka was able to save Padme and capture Singh. In an attempt to force Pantora into joining the Separatists, the Trade Federation arranged for the kidnapping of the daughters of the planet's leader, Chairman Papanoida. Ahsoka infiltrated the office of the Trade Federation ambassador and rescued one of the girls. Becoming increasingly frustrated with the politics behind the Clone Wars, Ahsoka was taken under the wing of Senator Amidala, who took her to the Separatist capital, Raxus. There she met Mina Bonteri and her son Lux, both Separatists. She learned that the opposing side of the war was not evil by default as she once believed. She finally joined her master on another mission to investigate a distress beacon which wound up leading them to the ethereal realm known as Mortis. There they fought against immensely powerful beings known as the Father, Son, and Daughter. Ahsoka was killed by the dark side powered son, but the light side powered daughter chose to sacrifice her life to save the Padawan. The son and the father also wound up killing each other during the entire ordeal, and Ahsoka and Anakin were able to escape back to the known galaxy. When Jedi Master Evan Peel was captured by Separatist forces and imprisoned in a fortress called the Citadel, Ahsoka snuck her way into her master's mission to rescue him. Although Anakin was upset, her involvement was necessary as Master Peel trusted her with information vital to the Republic's war efforts before he was killed. On Felucia yet again, Ahsoka found herself captured by Trandoshans, who took her to their moon Waska to hunt her. She proved that she was able to fend for herself and even lead other Padawans to safety by fighting back against their captors and getting a signal out to the Republic. Reunited with Anakin, she traveled to Mon Cala to fight against invading Separatist forces who sought to assassinate their king. Ahsoka was instrumental in protecting the young leader, and she passed on her own wisdom to help him lead his people to victory. She then participated in the space battle above the planet Umbara, but never set foot on the ground. The Clone Wars became more personal for her and Anakin when they learned that many Togrudans were being enslaved by the Zygerian slaving empire. Together they infiltrated the slave world Kadavo and rescued her people. After Mina Bonteri was assassinated, her son Lux publicly accused Count Dooku of being responsible. Fearing for her friend's life, Ahsoka protected him from Separatist retribution. He took her to a Mandalorian hideout on the planet Karlak, where they met up with Bo-Katan Kryze and the members of the Mandalorian extremist group Death Watch. Lux hoped to hire them to assassinate Dooku, but Death Watch attacked a nearby village, prompting Ahsoka to protect those in need. She and Lux were forced to retreat, and Bo-Katan gave chase, fighting and losing to Ahsoka. She parted ways with Lux, but not for long. Ahsoka, Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Rex traveled to the planet Onderon to meet up with Lux, Saw Gerrera, and Saw's sister, Stila. Their goal was to train the Onderonian freedom fighters in an unofficial capacity. They trained the soldiers to combat Separatist forces, but Stila was killed, driving a wedge between the Jedi and Saw. Ahsoka then took a reprieve from combat and accompanied a group of younglings to Ilum where they underwent the Gathering, a ritual to find their kyber crystals and build their first lightsabers. On their way home, their ship was attacked by pirates who wanted to steal the kyber crystals. Ahsoka was captured protecting the younglings, but they all worked together to rescue her. Near the end of the Clone Wars, Ahsoka was accused of masterminding a plot to bomb the Jedi Temple and she was kicked out of the Order. Anakin was able to clear her name by discovering the true culprit was her friend, Beresafi. The Jedi Council invited Ahsoka back into the Order, but she refused, having lost faith in those she respected most, and she ventured into the galaxy on her own. She soon met the Martez sisters, who were struggling to survive on level 1313 of Coruscant. Ahsoka saw that the Jedi and the Republic had failed to help the same people they swore to protect as she got wrapped up in the sisters' own necessary schemes. Their misadventures caught the eye of Ahsoka's former enemy, Bo-Katan. The Mandalorian informed Ahsoka that the one-time Sith Lord of Maul had taken control of her planet and that she needed Republic help to drive him out. Ahsoka reunited with Anakin, Rex, and Obi-Wan to lead clone troopers in the Siege of Mandalore, but Anakin and Obi-Wan were called away. 
Ahsoka disapproved of their decision to abandon people who needed their help, but continued on with the mission anyway. Bo-Katan and Ahsoka successfully captured Maul, and they parted ways as friends. But as Ahsoka delivered Maul to Coruscant, the Republic fell, the Clone Wars came to an end, and Order 66 was issued to an inhibitor chip inside every clone trooper. Clones across the galaxy betrayed and murdered their Jedi, including Rex, who turned his blaster on Ahsoka. She was able to save Rex by stopping his inhibitor chip, but Maul escaped and set their ship on a collision course with a nearby planet. Ahsoka and Rex abandoned ship and went into hiding. Ahsoka spent a year on the run from Imperial forces and Inquisitors, protecting the people she came to know while doing her best to keep her identity and abilities in the Force a secret. But she still caught the eye of Senator Bail Organa of Alderaan, who was part of a resistance movement against the Empire. He invited Ahsoka to join him, and she began operating under the pseudonym Fulcrum. She helped rebel cells across the galaxy, such as one that included a young Mandalorian woman named Sabine Wren, another Jedi in hiding named Kanan Jarrus, and his Padawan Ezra Bridger. Her identity was well hidden until Kanan was captured by the Empire and a sizable rebel force was required to rescue him. It was then that Ahsoka revealed her true self to them all. On a mission with her new friends to rescue an Imperial defector, she encountered the Empire's enforcer, Darth Vader. She quickly sensed that he was, in fact, her former master, Anakin, and Vader in turn sensed the presence of his apprentice. Knowing they needed more help, Kanan and Ezra found Rex and a handful of other clones who had removed their inhibitor chips. They joined the Rebellion as well, and Rex and Ahsoka were reunited after years apart. The Empire's Inquisitors continued to hunt her, Kanan, and Ezra, as well as try to kidnap four sensitive children once more. Again, Ahsoka was required to face agents of evil to rescue innocent younglings. But the presence of three powerful Force sensitives was difficult to hide from the Empire, and so she traveled with her new friends to a Jedi temple on Lothal for guidance. They were not only instructed to visit the ruined planet Malachor for answers, but Ahsoka also came to accept the fact that her master had fallen to the dark side. On Malachor, the group of three discovered the ruin of endless conflict between the Jedi and the Sith, but they were also met by three Imperial Inquisitors and Maul who had been trapped there for some time. If that weren't enough, Vader also tracked them down. Ahsoka held her former master at bay so Kanan and Ezra could escape, and she remained trapped with a monster. About three years later, Ezra found himself outside of time and space in a place called the World Between Worlds. There he was able to witness Ahsoka's duel with Vader and reach out to save her from certain death. She ultimately had to return to her own time and find a way off Malachor for herself. We don't know how long that took, but by the time of her return, Ezra had gone missing. Ahsoka met up with Sabine and the two of them set off to find their friend together. And that's the last time we saw Ahsoka in the final scene of the animated series Star Wars Rebels. It's unclear exactly when that episode takes place in the timeline. It could be before or after the events of The Mandalorian. If I had to guess, I think when Ahsoka appears in live action, she will have already found and rescued Ezra, but I only say that because I don't see her dragging her feet on that mission, and The Mandalorian is meant to take place five or so years after Star Wars Rebels ends. I also don't think The Mandalorian will bring any of that up. It's not relevant to the story being told, and also why spoil how that story ends. But as you can see, Ahsoka Tano has plenty of connections with not just Mandalorians, but a Mandalorian we know in the show already, Bo-Katan. It sounds like they have remained on good terms in the past 30 years or so. I should also point out that while Din Djarin seeks a Jedi, Ahsoka is technically not. She's even claimed to be no Jedi herself. However, she embodies many of the ideals that a Jedi should, more so than many members of the Jedi Council of her time. I think that fits in nicely with the themes of the series, showing us that being a Mandalorian isn't about the rules one follows, but about what a Mandalorian does with the power that they wield. We should know more soon, and once Ahsoka is revealed, you can absolutely expect me to talk about her even more when we have the full context of her appearance in the series. But for now, I hope this video helps some people who maybe didn't watch The Clone Wars or Star Wars Rebels. But you absolutely should. Start binging it every week while you wait for new Mandalorian episodes. Get Ahsoka's full story, because she is a fantastic character, and she deserves more than some nerd talking about her on YouTube. But until then, please like this video, subscribe to the channel to keep up with all of our Mandalorian coverage, follow us on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.